right here. Well, he's a better player. <laughs> well, come on, go ahead. No, Don, Don's guitar is actually a copy of a slightly different model uh, by, made by um, Favino, Favino, right? It's so, a little bit bigger in the hips. A little bit bigger. It's about a little bit bigger. So that was sort of a competitor of the of the Salmer guitar. So they do sound a little different. And then amplified, they're going to be slightly different. But they actually are, even though they look the same, they are somewhat different. They are a little bit different. Okay, we have a question over here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my answer to that actually, I think it's it's an interesting contrast between Don and myself, because I think Don plays it a little close. Actually, I think some of the solos that you played were actually Django solos, right? I spent a lot of time copying him, but in the spirit of what you're saying, I think what made Django great is he didn't copy anybody. He, he just did what he felt, and I think that's the way to approach it. Yeah, that's what you want to do. But with, with trying to recreate something a little bit, um, I mean, basically, I grew up on blues and rock and roll. So, uh, you know, when you listen to Elvis when you're a kid, it's kind of hard to sound like Django. <laughs> Plus, we all actually so have... Homework I had to do. We actually have homes and running water. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're one step away. But my feeling is that um, if you listen to the real late recordings of Django, he was going for something really new. He was going for a very bebop oriented style and there are har hardly any guitar players that played in the in the bebop style so i sort of look at it like what would django be do would ha would he have done if he kept going cuz he was obviously at the point where he was going to change his playing a real lot so um, when he passed away so i don't particularly feel I, I play as an homage to Django, but not at all like a replica of Django. I don't play any of his actual solos or anything, but it's in tribute to Django more than anything. Any other questions? Play. All right. Okay. All right. That can Great. happen. Thank you. Yeah, well, we got one more in back there. One more in back. No. Yeah, well, there are, there are a lot of great players, including Django's kids and grandkids, that are still around playing. I, my favorite right now is, is a guy named Stokolo Rosenberg. Um, Angelo DeBar is great. Borelli Lagrange. I would say those are probably the three yeah, leading cutting-edge guys. They're probably, what, all 50s-ish, yeah. you know? There's a great DVD out called uh, Live in Vienna by Borella the Grand, you can get just about anywhere actually. And it has probably a dozen of the leading players in the world in this style. Uh, violinists, accordion players, uh, all in different combinations. Hour after hour, just some fantastic. Not us though. No, <laughs> we didn't make the cut. I still don't get that. <laughs> no, uh, it's well worth it. It's, I mean, it's cheap too. It's like fifteen dollars. We got we got wait listed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's well worth it. Uh, if no other questions, I'm going to uh, just turn it over to Joe and the group. Great. And we let them take off. Thank you very much. Sure. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Stomping, stomping. All right. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in, in honor of Mr. Lou, who actually saw Django, which is, I don't think I've ever played anywhere where anybody said that before. Uh, there was a gal that presumably was playing with Gino. That had seen Same Django. Thing, wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. But if Mr. Lou wants Jatandre, He's gonna get it. he gets it. This is the tune that actually the hot club, uh, the, the quintet of the hot club of France used as their, in their promotional film. So one of the best pictures of Django, the motion pictures of Django,